every time Mayweather does something bad or pronounce something wrong, it's automatically viral. But if he does something good, they never talk about it. But like he said, it's between him and Allah. So regardless of what people say or do, none of that matter. Because he's undefeated for a reason. Like I said, Allah don't make mistakes. He only made a couple things perfect. Floyd Mayweather undefeated record. Aki on split decision, knocking all y'all decafs out and nobody could do nothing about it. Y'all stay talking in the comment section. But y'all can't pull up. Y'all don't have the cojones to pull up. But we're going to talk about it. <laughs> Shout out to all my Aki's in the chat. Real rap. OG Swag, uh, Zoos of Life. Appreciate everybody. You know we finna cook them tonight. You know, we about to rap on the mic. I'm not even out here reporting anymore. I started preaching. You know what I mean? So, um, Mike Tyson came out saying that Mayweather will be a great trainer. A, a trainer. It's his life. It's, it's in his DNA. So, Mike Tyson co-signed that. And I, I agree with that 100% because there's a difference between a, 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 a fan watching the fight and a boxer watching the fight. Mayweather has a boxer eye. Forget that. Scratch it. He has the goat eyes. Like he really could see things that we don't see. I could see things that the decaps don't see. But May Mayweather sees things that Aki don't see. So of course he's going to be a great trainer because he's going to deliver the message. And obviously you have to work with your fighter attributes. So what I mean by that, if a fighter don't have reflexes, you're going to definitely tell him to put his hands up. But if a fighter's like Prince Nassim Hamed awkward, you're going to let him be awkward because that's what make him special. Because you can't prepare for him. You get what I'm saying? So uh, at the end of the day, I, always, I told y'all, if Mayweather focus on being a trainer, he definitely will be one of the best trainers of all time. But it have to be somebody worth his while. For example, Deontay Wilder, for example. Javante Tank Davis However Javante already got a great team Deontay Wilder already has a great team But it, don't, it doesn't hurt to add Another main member to the team Deontay Wilder is adding Foreman Which we're going to touch on it later on And Javante always You know takes tips from Floyd But my point is whoever Is going to be made with a student is a lucky cat So um, I got another great news. Obviously, let me hit the bell for my eye keys one time. Boxing might come back in June. Not 100%. By Bob Aram talked to ESPN and he uh, let them know that he's working on three fights to host on June. So we'll see. He obviously talked about Fury and Wilder possibly being postponed yet again. And they could have tuna fights. So we're going to talk about it. But... Um, at the end of the day, we can't wait uh, for a fight. Like, we've been slaughtering for a, a big fight. It'd be wise for a network to have a big fight as their first card back. Because I, I, the, the, the fights and the cards that Bob Aram talked about weren't major cards. Like, they're not big names. For example, Crawford, Lopez, or Lomachenko. No, nah, it, it ain't none of them guys. It's like some, you know, contenders, prospect, and stuff like that. However, it'd be wise for them to actually throw a big event or it's just a name because at the end of the day, the boxing fans been looking to talk about something, man. You know what I mean? Everybody beefing on Twitter and social media. So people have been anticipating fights. So it'd be wise for the, for a network to have a big fight. Now, for the people that want to watch any striking, uh, obviously, uh, t uh, the UFC, I believe next week or the week after, it's May something. I'm not sure. But Tony fighting somebody as a replacement opponent for Khabib. So that's a card y'all could look into. But like I said, it'd be wise for a network to actually host an event that's a, that's big because it's going to uh, attract a lot of attention. So let's move on to the first round. <sighs> and that's Manny Pacquiao versus Crawford. This is my thing. You understand? I ain't going to let you talk. I did the talking tonight. So at the end of the day, subscribe below if you're trying to get smarter by the minute. If you're trying to get dumb about a second, don't and listen to these decaf slash old media dumb casual ass fans that hate the truth. But you know what Aki brings to the table. Split decision episode 31, hosted, posted by Aki, mix master, produced, engineered, and all the above the past, present, and future of pound for, of pound for pound. Aki got all the straps. 
and all y'all decas won't do nothing about it. Don't even have the cojones to call in, but y'all got the cojones to talk in the comment section like the keyboard warriors y'all are. But at the end of the day, you don't know shit <laughs> about boxing. You better not duck me, son. T-Tone. You better not duck me, son. T-Tone. <laughs> you call me the problem. But you could call me the can man, because anybody, anybody can, can get it. Americans, it don't matter who Americans, you are. You could be my IP too. You can get it. I'm sorry, B. Call me the can man. So, like I said time and time again, if you learn how to accept the truth, it will set you free. And when it comes to debating, if someone brings the truth to the table, the other side is nothing but a lie. So I'm down to hear y'all, you know, thoughts. But if it's your opinion, it's literally just that. Aki brings facts to the table. That's why I'm the undisputed. Pound for pound. Number one, when it comes to debating, you name it, when it comes to boxing. So call in, tune in, click on the notification bell if you want to get notified every time I post to go live on Split Decision where Aki preaches the truth. And when you open the book of the truth, that's exactly what 